Good to go. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Kate. I appreciate your time, man. Do you want to just give everyone a bit of a background and a backstory to who you are and what you do? Absolutely, brother. Yeah, first and foremost, I appreciate you having me on. I mean, it's nice to meet you on here. Um, and I'm excited to to talk about everything. So, yeah, so my name's Cade Junkerth, and I've been a fitness coach for over eight years. I studied, you know, sports conditioning, actually specifically in school at Texas A&M University. And um, a lot of people don't know what that specifically is, but it's basically just think like exercise science is what I science, is what I studied at Texas A&M, had a coaching minor and a business minor. Um, and then starting in school, I started training clients at the rec center at my school in college. And then um, I did the whole in the gym, basically lived in a gym training clients for like six plus years. Um, and then I started doing this online style of coaching uh, about four years ago on the side. And now this has been kind of like my full-time thing for, for over a year, just training clients online. Um, it's going really well. I've, I've really figured out that, you know, you don't need someone in there counting your reps, you know, being there the entire hour for your yeah. workout. <laughs> you know, you can kind of get everything you need as far as structure and guidance wise, like kind of from afar. So once I kind of figured out how to train clients this way, I, I went all in on it and, and things are going good. So that's kind of just how I got into it a little bit about my background. Um, so, yeah. Mm, yeah. 100% brother. That's awesome. And yeah, before we jump into all the, the juicy stuff, you know, getting big biceps and whatnot, what does it mean to be a valuable man to you? For sure. It's a good question. Um, and I'll put some thought into it. So being a, a man in general, just being a, a, a man of value or a valuable man, really what I think it means is finding your purpose or understanding your purpose and then living every day in alignment with that. So maybe you're someone out there listening. Maybe you don't really know what your purpose is. So I would say like becoming a man, becoming a valuable man first is like figuring out what that purpose is. And it, maybe it doesn't need to be you know, like something that you do as a career, you know, you can still work a nine to five and have a purpose. You know, maybe it's your father, you know, that's your purpose, you know, something like that. But, but just, you know, having a purpose in life that's bigger than yourself um, and then living in alignment with that. I think that's being what being a man or being a valuable man is. So like, I'll give an example for myself, you know, my, my purpose I've found right now. And I think your purpose can change, you know, as you grow, but right now, my, yeah, right now my purpose is, you know, helping people transform their, their life through fitness. And so, you know, every day I'm trying to live in alignment with that. And, you know, I'm doing everything when I wake up to, to when I go to sleep to basically like be in alignment with my purpose, make sure that I'm doing everything I can do um, to, to grow within that and just provide as much service as I can. That's going to provide to that service um, and that purpose that I'm going for. So I hope that makes sense, but th yep. that's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah, totally, dude. That's probably one of the best ones anyone said. Yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly. And probably once you do find your purpose, everything else kind of falls into place. If I guess you do have something bigger to focus on and you're driven towards, then you become more driven, you become more focused, you get more tunnel vision, you get more inspired, and then things just fall into place. And I think that's a really good point. For sure, yeah. I, I think... What you said is like, yeah, things fall into place. And I, I think if you don't have that, sometimes, right, you can feel kind of lost or like, you know, you, you could be like living kind of hedonistically, like living for pleasure. And I think that's honestly mm -hmm. like kind of like when you're a boy, you know what I mean? Like kind of before you become yeah. a man when you're living like that. Um, And, you know, I used to be like that, like but kind of before I found my purpose. But then when you find like something that's bigger than you, you know, that you're trying to like work towards and, and kind of serve others with, then I feel like you kind of, you're able to just almost put the kind of the pleasure seeking behaviors to the side um, and really be in alignment towards kind of a bigger purpose. So. 100%. You absolutely nailed it. It's probably the difference between being a boy and a man, you yeah. know, hedonistic behaviors and I suppose driven towards something bigger and, you know, helping other people. So really well said, dude. It's a great point. In terms of you though, and what you do, you're obviously a very fit person yourself being a trainer how important is that you know physical fitness side and being in the gym and training to both your mental health but just your health in general for sure yeah it's it's obviously important for your health like everyone knows like working out eating right is gonna like help you steer clear of like 
future diseases, you know, other issues that can come up if you, if you neglect your health and neglect fitness and nutrition, you know, obviously there's health benefits. Like every, everyone knows that. Okay. Um, and obviously there's even aesthetic benefits. Like you're going to, you're going to start to look better when you do these things, when you work out, you, you right. Obviously like, you know, there, there's things that start to change with your body that you notice. Um, and that's going to help with a lot of different areas of life too. Um, but really what I've found, um, you know, from my own personal experience of really taking control of my fitness and, you know, my exercise and my nutrition, what, I, what I found is more kind of like the confidence benefits, like just the huge boost in confidence, you know, the way I think about myself and then also just like, you know, how I've gained, um, to learn about how to basically challenge myself and, um, strive for more progress. And like the, it's literally a skill that you learn, you know, you can learn it through fitness and then you can transfer it to other areas of your life, like learning how to progress, learning how to challenge yourself and progress and kind of just continue to strive to, to be better and better. You know, I, I feel like that's a kind of a disciplined skill that you can learn and you can learn it through something like fitness and then you can transfer it over to, to other areas. So. 100% brother. And that brings me on to the next kind of part of that question. Do you think that training in the gym and physical fitness of getting stronger is the number one tool to increase your mental health, um, increase your mental strength. So I think, you know, it, it's, I don't think it's the end all be all like only way you can do it, but I think a lot of times, like it's kind of like the, the gateway drug that gets you into building kind of like mental strength and like self-improvement overall. Like I know for myself, like, you know, obviously I started kind of like with the, the fitness journey, um, learned how to, to become like physically strong and, you know, build up my body and that, that definitely transferred over into to mental strength. Um, but what I found is like that kind of like opened up the doors into basically like, all right, how can I improve overall? Like once you start improving your body, then it's almost like you, you might be able to resonate with this and, and relate to this just mm-hmm. with your, you know, like kind of like masculinity you know, ventures and like becoming the the most valuable man that you can be and everything like that. Like a lot of times it starts with fitness and that's kind of like the gateway drug. And then it's like, all right, now what, what else can I improve? And it's almost just like, it starts unraveling into other areas of your life and you just want to start improving on everything. So, so what I found mm-hmm. is like, you know, I feel like it's a good, really good place to start. Um, and it's going to kind of like get you into improving. Um, and then it's, and then it's going to like open up doors. Cause you, you, like we said from the last question and answer you know it, it's almost like a skill that then you learn and then you can transfer it into other things 100 mm. percent, mm. and it's such a good point because i think you get to the gym and you start working on your body and then you go all right maybe i need to fix up my diet and you work on that and then you go all right i'm getting pretty no i'm getting in good shape i'm eating well yeah. you should probably stop partying now so you stop going out and drinking and it becomes a bit of a, a domino effect so for anyone out there who's like fuck i'm not happy with where i'm at i'm a bit hedonistic I'm partying too much, just get into the gym, start running, do something. And then it's probably going to overlap with other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a good parallel, and I don't know if you know who Alex Ramosi is. I, I feel like he might. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he always relates it to business. So, you know, mm. it, it's kind of like, you know, cause you, you asked me basically is like, is mental strength the best way or sorry, is, is physical strength, improving your physical strength, the best way to improve your mental strength. You know, I think it's one of the best ways, but also like, you know, learning how to run a business or like even like improving in your career that builds a lot of mental strength as well. Um, but what I found like, there's a lot of parallels. Like if, if you learn how to do the, the physical strength stuff and improve your body and your health, like a lot of times it's, it's kind of like some of the same principles that you can transfer over to like, you know, building a business and scaling stuff like that. So. Yeah, totally brother. Cause you, you need patience and you need to, you know, wait for delayed gratification. You're not, you're not yeah. pumping bicep curls and the next day you got 30 inch biceps. It's like, you got to yeah. wait months, even years to get the results. Yeah. The, the, I was going to bring up the point of the delayed gratification. That's like probably one of the biggest things you learn because yeah, you know, you, you don't go to the gym. I mean, there's a little bit of gratification right away. Cause you see the pump and then you're like, okay, mm. <laughs> I see that. So that there's some immediate like feedback that you get. That's that's nice. Um, but it's not like you go into the gym and like you go look in the mirror and you're like, okay, like I, I see that I'm like, right. Like I'm getting step by step closer to my goal each mm. time. You know, you kind of just have to trust the process that it, it is going to get there. So it's almost like, you know, learning that de- delayed gratification and learning that it's not just going to like, you know, you're not going to see it really 
even day to day sometimes. Um, but as long as you're kind yeah, of putting yeah. those, those steps in, like you're still climbing that ladder, you're still making progress towards your goals. So. Yeah, 100%. And it's like, there's so many avenues and I've spoken about this with so many people, but there's so many avenues for instant gratification. Like you can jump on Tinder, you can go out, drink, do drugs. You can eat shitty food, whatever. You can watch Netflix. It's like to go into the gym and work out every day and you have to wait months to get results. It's like, it takes a lot of patience. And like you said, it will transfer into other areas of your life, whether it's business relationships, you know, just your personal development. There's so much overlap. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, the, the delayed gratification thing, that's, it's, it's tough because yeah, like you said, there's just so many ways to get easy dopamine spikes these days with TikTok and and everything. Like it's, it's basically just like a battle against easy dopamine hits. But if you can delay that and kind of like get the dopamine, this is something I talk about a lot on my social media, but if you can get the dopamine hits from like, from getting things done, because you, you do get those dopamine hits from like literal things that you do throughout the day, like checking off to do's and and going to the gym, Mm -hmm. like you're getting these positive, um, rewards in your brain like literally like chemical rewards from getting things done like if you're getting it from that then your brain is going to want more of that and so you're going to want to crave crave getting things done instead of like just craving the easy hit that you might get from tiktok and stuff like that so it can be like a you know a snowball effect in either direction and it's really about choosing like Mm. all right do the things that that's going to move you forward in life instead of just getting the easy hits um and then kind of demotivating you from wanting wanting to do the tasks that give you the, the rewards so yeah totally brother and it's like with those easy hits of dopamine it's like you get a bigger spike but then you drop straight away and you're up and down and up and down you have yep. big crashes and big jumps and it's like the delayed gratification although you don't get the results straight away you still get the little spikes and over time it goes up and up and up but once you start getting that progress it's long lasting like you work out and it doesn't doesn't stop making you feel good you do anything that brings delayed gratification and there's like long lasting fulfillment as opposed to these up and down. And it's just exhausting. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the, the dopamine, like if if it comes easy, it's going to go easy. Basically, if Mm. if it's harder to get there, that's when it stays because, because literally like once you get there, like once you build a body, it's not like it's just going to go away overnight, but when you watch a TikTok video, get a spike and feel good, then, then yeah, it literally goes right away. Right. So, Mm. (laughs) so it's exactly right. It's not like, like, I can't think back to last week and go, fuck, remember that TikTok video I watched? You're like, oh, unreal. It made me feel so good. It's like, <laughs> it, it makes you feel good in the moment, but it's it's just such a waste of time. And there definitely is a space for instant gratification. Like you need a, a, an amount of it. But like you said, you do get some of that as you work towards the delayed gratification. Like you go to the gym or you work on a business and you tick little things off on the way. And it's like, yeah. okay, I don't have that big result, but I got that little spike of dopamine and it just builds. Right. Yeah. And I think what you said, you know, having a place for it, I think it's, it's about curating the content. You know, if someone's listening to someone like you on Instagram, like a lot of your reels are about improving and, and, you know, maybe there's some entertainment somewhere in there, um, but it's, it's entertainment, like with a good purpose behind it and like wanting to provide value to people. Um, So if people are like curating their content, like, you know, taking in more value, um, with the social media, then yeah, it, it can be a good thing, but it, it's when you're just mindlessly consuming, um, when, when it can become a bad thing. And I, you know, I think mm. curating your content to be able to like, just constantly have value coming towards you can be actually a very good thing. You know, if you're following the right people and and paying attention to kind of what you're consuming, but when you're mindlessly just scrolling, you know, it, it can be very kind of like mm. brain, brain numbing <laughs> and, and stuff like yeah, that. Dude, so, yeah. You actually, yeah, you make a really good point there. Like I've spoken about how environment affects you, like the people around you, but you made a good point. You, I guess your social media environment does too. Like if you could curate all of your feeds to be giving you, you know, impactful stuff, positive stuff, stuff to help you develop, then that's your environment too. And it's like you're surrounding yourself with everything you need to progress. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think on the, on just, since we're on the topic, I don't know how we got so much on, on kind of like dopamine and <laughs> stuff, but I, I do like talking about this stuff, even though it's maybe not necessarily hundred percent fitness related. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I think thinking about this and this is something I've talked about with my clients before, even on, on coaching calls is like, um, trying not to be a consumer and being more of a creator. So like, you know, or, you know, and if you're not a creator, if there's no reason for you to create for like your own business or something like that, or just over social media, 
then honestly, you know, you, you don't need to consume a whole lot. Um, so to kind of just be mindful of that, but like for someone like me and you, Nick, like when we have a business or something that we're trying to promote, like you need to start thinking of yourself as a creator and not a consumer when mm -hmm. it comes to social media. So hundred percent brother. Great point. And we're, yeah, we, I don't know how we got on a dopamine <laughs> kind of case, but it was, and they're all really important things, but so back to the kind of the mental toughness and the fitness side of things. Yeah. It maybe not be the number one tool, but I think it's definitely one of the most accessible and I suppose easy to navigate tools to increase your your mental strength. For those people who have never trained before, they might be listening to this or thinking about training. What's the easiest way for them to get started? Because obviously we've been in fitness for a very long time and it's just kind of normal for us. But for a lot of people, it's probably pretty daunting. Right. Yeah, good question. So I think kind of just first step is being aware of, you know, where you're at right now, you know, kind of just um, having some self-awareness, you know, and figuring out and kind of just really looking in, inward at yourself and, and kind of just seeing where you're at right now, um, making some goals. But the first step is definitely knowing where you're at right now and kind of seeing the gap between where you want to be and where you're at. Okay. So maybe you're 50 pounds overweight. Okay. So if this is you, or maybe you're 50 to hundred pounds overweight, if you're severely overweight, you know, some of the first steps you can do is just, and no pun intended, but increase your steps. Okay. That, that's one of the easiest levers you can pull is <laughs> <laughs> just like getting like seven to 10,000 steps a day, like doing that alone, you know, cause a lot of people are very sedentary these days and that, that can be, mm. that can, that can help you. That's going to be contributing to putting on a lot of weight. So if you can just increase your steps from, you know, being completely sedentary to getting like seven to 10,000 steps a day, that right there, you're going to burn more calories. There's so many health benefits, like your, your risk of, of disease is going to go down significantly. Um, so that, that's probably like the number one easiest lever you can pull to just um, increase your health, especially if you're severely overweight. Um, so that that's probably the biggest thing. And then kind of, you know, starting small and scaling it up. Um, I would say like working out, with the resistance training, like two to three times a week, that's what I would start at. And I, I always like, if you look on, on my social media, it's just all about, um, how like resistance training is, is going to be the most, um, efficient and effective way, um, to reach your goals, as opposed to a lot of people think just like doing a ton of cardio to lose weight is the way you want to go. Um, and what mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm always trying to, um, preach about like doing more resistance training over the cardio, because you can burn a similar amount of calories, um, you, as, as doing cardio, honestly, but then you're getting the added, added benefit of working. Sorry about that. Got a call. You're getting the added benefit of, of working your muscle groups. So adding stimulus, um, for your muscles, um, to build more muscle, which not only is going to obviously help your physique and your body composition composition, but also building more muscle is going to help you burn more calories, um, at rest in the long run. Um, so that's going to help you lose fat as well. So, so spend your time more wisely by prioritizing strength and resistance training. Um, and that, that's honestly going to be the best thing for you. And then increasing those steps and then scale it from there. Maybe you can add some extra cardio in on top of that. Um, but I would say that's kind of mm -hmm. like your, your baseline is like increasing the steps, um, get, get two to three resistance training workouts in and it resists people. So resistance training, people hear that they think it's, um, has to be really, really heavy weightlifting resistance training can just be resistance bands. It can be body weight stuff. I've got really beginner mm -hmm. clients that start out with just resistance band and body weight programs. You'd be surprised at how much you can do with just that. Like you can do a whole lot with just body weight and resistance bands. I've, I've had a client specifically who lives in Germany um, and he has been doing resistance band and body weight workouts for like a year and a half now. Like there's a lot of ways you can just continue to progress on even just using body weight and resistance bands. So it can be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So if you're just getting started, you know, don't think that you got to be like a bodybuilder training six plus times a week in the gym. Like it can be as simple as two to three workouts per week. Doesn't even need to necessarily be in the gym. That should be a good goal to get to. Um, but it doesn't have to be, it can just be body weight and resistance bands. You can do a whole lot with that. And I've got people right now that are doing that who have never worked out in their life basically. And they're starting right there. Um, it's a good place to start. So, yeah, hundred percent, brother, nailed it. And there's so much misinformation or co like colliding information or overlapping information 
on social media, especially so many coaches would say exactly what you've said. I've heard coaches who say that's a myth. There's coaches who just put out all these different kinds of ideas. And for people who have no idea what they're doing, it'd be confusing as fuck. Like there's so many different ideas and perspectives and ways to go about your training out there. And it's like, who do people listen to? Like, what is your suggestion? Because even myself, like not in terms of fitness, but other things, whether it's mindset or, you know, relationships, you hear people speak about them on social media and it's like, this guy says one thing and he says another. And it's like, what's, what actually aligns with me? Right. Yeah. I think that last part you said that what part aligns with you, I think that's when like starting to get a baseline um, understanding and knowledge of, of fitness and how your body reacts to certain things. Like, you need to start thinking critically about it because, you know, if you're just mindlessly following people on social media, there's so many people that just, they'll, they'll be like, all right, this person's in shape. Let me just do their TikTok workout that they put on there. If you're just doing that stuff, like you're just going to be thrown in so many different directions. Like you're just going to hear so many conflicting things. So you, you got to start like learning for yourself and learn how your, your body reacts to certain things and see so actual professional coaching. If you're wanting actual advice, um, cause yeah, you're, you're usually not going to find a whole lot off of just like someone posting a workout on, on Instagram or TikTok and trying to follow something like that. Like, yeah, you're just going to be thrown in a bunch of different directions and, and like the, like sticking to a program is, is the next thing. So once you kind of get some of these habits in place, you know, doing two to three times a week, uh, resistance training workouts, you're increasing your steps. Um, hopefully you kind of start to scale up from there and you start incre- improving your diet. Um, but like just sticking to an actual program, you know, that that's one of the biggest things too. And and like, it doesn't need to be like, I know I just, this, this is going to be sound kind of conflicting. Cause I just said, you need to start, um, you know, learning and, and getting a baseline of knowledge. Um, but don't overthink it either. You don't, you don't need to have the most perfect optimal program. Like, you know, you, you don't need to know that everything is completely hundred percent perfect right off the bat because that's part of the process of learning um, is just like starting with the program, seeing how your body reacts to it. Um, and then trying to follow that, see the progress, maybe see what works, see what doesn't. Um, but sticking to something <laughs> um, is, is what you want to mm. do because, because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of learning that comes out of that. But if you just flip flop from one thing to the other, then not much learning is going to come out of that. Yeah, totally brother. And it's like, you need consistency. It doesn't matter if you, uh, uh, going on a 10 minute walk each day or doing a 20 minute session in the gym. It's like, you need consistency and you're better off doing 10 minutes a day for two months than one hour on Wednesday, an hour on Saturday. It's, it's just going to completely destroy your progress and consistency builds momentum. Momentum builds energy and that it just gets you going forward and you, you find yourself all the way up here within, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, and you just keep moving upwards. But as soon as you lose that consistency, you got to start all over again. It's you got the challenges of motivating yourself to get out of the house, and you got all these challenges that come with starting. And that's why consistency is so important in my eyes. Absolutely, yeah. And that that, that kind of reminded me of something I was thinking about. Um, have you read Atomic Habits by James Clear? Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so like one of the things he talked about was how he knew, had a friend who, who instead of like you know, a lot of people will, will be like, all right, I'm going to start going to the gym. They'll have these lofty goals. Um, they're like, all right, I'm going to do this like perfect workout every time I go. Um, and it, it, it can be too much at, in the beginning when you're completely right. Like the consistency is the most important thing that you need to lock down. Like if you can get the consistency part down, then like I said earlier, you can scale it up from there. But you know, if you, if you aren't consistently hitting the gym, say you're getting to the gym one time a week, then, then you're, you're missing the most important habit of everything, which is that consistency. So what he talked about is like his friend just got to the gym and he, but like five times a week, but, and he would just literally be there for five minutes (laughs) in the beginning. So he would, it sounds like that wouldn't do anything. Um, but he was just getting the consistent consistency part down first, which is the most important habit. So he was getting there, you know, I think it was six times a week or something like that for just literally for just five minutes in the beginning, but that built the habit of getting there, which really is like, you know, you got to be consistent at getting there. Cause if we're not getting to the gym, then we're not doing anything. Right. So he, he got that habit locked down hundred percent. And then, and then you can scale it up from there. You know, then you can start going 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 
Um, but yeah, the consistency is the most important thing. Yeah, 100%, bro. And I've been on the other side of it too. I've definitely let myself slide and I've broken habits or routines and had to go back to the beginning again. And it's like, I'm just saying that from experience, you know, like I've had days in the past where it's like, fuck, I don't want to have a cold shower. I'm not going to do it. And then the next day comes around and you go, well, I didn't do it yesterday. I don't feel like doing it today. So it's fine. I'll skip one more day. And it, that becomes a new habit. Once you start making excuses, you set that standard. And I talked about it on another podcast, but if you set the standard there, you're not going to exceed it. You're just going to keep on dropping the bar ever so slightly until your habit or your routine is completely gone. And that's why if, if you don't feel like going to the gym today, just go for 20 minutes, stretch, do something just so you tick it off and you right. don't say tomorrow, well, I didn't go yesterday. So fuck, it doesn't matter if I skip it again. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you said there about just getting there, like it doesn't need to be the most perfect workout when you go there. I think that's people get too much in their head and they're like, I don't feel energized or motivated right now. Um, so, so like they don't feel like they're going to get a good workout in and it discourages them from going like, honestly, Nick, like you, you probably agree with this, like 99% of the time you don't just feel motivated and ready to go to the gym. Like that's not what, yeah. you, it's not like you just sit there and you're like, all right, let me get motivated. You just harness up this energy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, let's go. Yeah. No, you, you don't. And yeah. like, there's definitely days where, and it's, you know, maybe once a week or three times a week if you're up or once a month, if you're a bit down that you're like, fuck yeah, let's get in the gym. Let's, right. you know, pump yep. out like two hour session. You definitely have those days. But like you said, most of the time, it's about getting in there, getting it done and ticking it off. Yeah. And I think the ticking it off thing, um, th there's a point I wanted to make with that. And it's just that like the action is what actually leads to the motivation, not the other way around. Like, it's not like you, yeah. yeah so, like literally like doing the little thing, like putting on your shoes like you're like, oh, I put on my shoes. I'm a little bit more motivated now because I got that done. It's like, oh, I got in my car and I drove to the gym. I'm already here. Now I'm kind of motivated. So it's like all these little like actions that you're taking actually increase your motivation rather than like you think that you need to get mm. motivated to do the actions. It's actually the the other way around. So that's mm, what I- 100%, 100%. It's like self-confidence too. It doesn't come before the action. You build self-confidence by- creating this, I guess, trail of proof behind you that you can get things done. And uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but David Goggins, when he talks about um, his training and whatnot, and he said some mornings he literally sits there and stares at his runners for like 30 <laughs> minutes. He's like, I don't want to fucking run. Yeah. But he just gets it done. And that's the difference between, I guess, being a man and still being a boy. It's like you just get shit done even when you don't want to. Yeah, and I think kind of going back to what we talked about earlier, you know, and tying it to to David Goggins, it's, you know, the reason that he is a very, a man that people look up to is because, you know, it's not that this is enjoyable for him. Like, you know, this, this is something that he definitely has a higher purpose. Like he's doing this to show others and, and motivate others, like what's possible. Um, so, you know, obviously David Goggins, like if he didn't have a higher purpose for this, there's no way he'd be doing, be able to do the things that he's doing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think, you know, the reason he's like a, a very valuable high value man that people look up to is because he's able to put himself through really hard things um, for a bigger purpose. That's, that's the way I'm thinking about it. So. Yeah, totally dude. And he, he said it himself, like if it weren't for all the people who say like, you've saved my life, you've helped me with this, you've helped me with that. He wouldn't still be doing the things he's doing. He feels like he still has that, I suppose, um, level of accountability or the requirement to still be doing what he's doing for, everyone who looks up to him like he said it himself yeah 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 i think if, if you don't have that higher purpose you if you don't if you're not um driven to you know do something bigger than you then then yeah then then a lot of times you are not going to be as motivated this is something i made a post about um a while back it's like you know if, if you're not feeling motivated think about two other people in your life um that look up to you because that i'm sure there's people in your life that literally they look up to you as like a, a role model. Um, and so what, when I think about that thing, cause I can think of like, well, I'm obviously I think about like almost a hundred people cause I'm a coach, <laughs> but, but like yeah. I can, you know, when I think about just like friends or family, even that, that motivates me so much. Like I'm sure most people can think of like maybe a niece, a nephew, a little brother, you know, someone in their life that looks up to them. 
like think about that and and think about how this person looks up to to me as a as a example of of like being a strong individual or like they, they look up to me as as an example of what they could be in the future so i i found that like thinking about that is a way for like almost like endless motivation when you, when you kind of keep those people in mind so that's just something mm-hmm. when, you, when you talked about david goggins like thinking about other people that he's doing it for that that's what popped in my head so. yeah such a good point and other people can be a really good motivator just to keep you yeah driven towards your purpose so we did, we did touch on it briefly, but before we finish, maybe we'll dive into it again in terms of our purpose. Mm-hmm. For those guys who are listening and they don't mm-hmm. know what their purpose is, how can they start working towards that, either finding it or creating it? That's good. So I think people, a lot of times, they've got the misconception that they've got, that they need to like, like before they get into a career or something like that, they've like got to know their purpose. They're like, all right, I've got to know exactly what I'm doing when honestly, like it probably took me a while to figure out that this was my purpose. You know, I, I was actually going to be like a, 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 what's it called? A, a physical therapist. So I was going to like help people rehab from injuries and stuff like that. That's what I was initially going to school for. Um, but then, you know, along the way, you know, studying things, figuring out that I actually didn't, kind of like that path when I started to learn more about it. Um, you know, then I, I stumbled across like figuring out this was more of my purpose. Um, and then actually doing it, um, and figuring out that it was super fulfilling, helping people, you know, reach their goals and fitness and stuff like that. That's when I figured out it was my purpose. So it's not like I just was like, okay, let me seek to figure out what's going to be my purpose, hone in on it and do it. It's like almost you sometimes just need to try certain things like mm. fail um, and, and, you know, just keep trying and figure out, you know, what, what resonates with you. You know, you, you got to become more self-aware. You got to, you got to learn more things about yourself so that, you know, kind of like, you know, what, what value can you bring? And so when, when you learn more about yourself, you kind of learn what value you have that helps you figure out your purpose. Okay. So like, you know, for me, even, you know, doing this in the gym, I figured out, for myself that for one, I can be very introverted. So the, the online stuff actually um, works better for me because I'm not good at like being in front of people all day. It would, it would exhaust me being in the, in the gym yeah. for, for nine hours a day talking with people. Um, so, <laughs> so that, you know, there's just certain things you learn as you, as you do more things in life, you learn more about yourself. Um, you kind of learn how you provide value um, and, and more about your personality and the more you learn, the more you, you figure out what value you can provide to people. Um, and, and the more you're going to kind of stumble into your purpose. Um, so yep. I think it's a lifelong journey. You know, I, I think, mm. you know, I'll, I'll constantly be, be learning more about myself and my purpose is going to evolve um, and it's yeah. going to scale up. You know, hopefully at some point I feel like I'm, you know, I just want to be helping more and more people just scale my purpose, um, which I feel like I, I have been year after year. Um, but yeah, just start doing things, just start learning more about yourself, just start failing. You know, I, I, I worked a few different jobs that I failed at. I actually got quit or I got fired from a job. And, you know, that's actually when I started doing this full time, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I know that cause I was doing this on the side, um, and I got fired from a job. Um, and I was like, you know, I probably should have just already been doing this full time. Like, this is obviously what I'm passionate about. I'm, I'm much, I'm providing more value to people doing this. Um, but you know, sometimes you just have to do things and fail and figure out kind of like what really is the thing that you're supposed to be doing. So. Mm, well said, dude. And yeah, I just remembered something you said earlier and something that I totally agree with is your purpose is probably constantly changing. Like your purpose right now could be completely different to 10 years time. You know, yeah. you might, I don't know like where you're at, but you might have a family in 10 years and it's like, that's what, what your purpose will be then. And then after that, it might be traveling or, you know, spending more time with family. Your purpose is yeah. always evolving and changing. And it's really hard to not, I guess, tie yourself to that and set it in stone because you want to, in my eyes. But if you can find that balance of this is my purpose now, I'm going to focus on it. But if it does change, that's okay. Right. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point. Because, yeah, in the past, like when I was working in gyms, like, yeah, I felt like that was my purpose. I was like, I need to be in the gym working with these clients one-on-one, which at the time, yeah, that, that was good. Like I was, I was helping people and I was putting everything I had into that. 
Um, and little did I know that in the future, like I would, I would kind of evolve and do something in a different way. You know, I'm still helping people, but it's a little bit different now. Um, but yeah, you, you don't know where you're going to be, but just focus on where you're at right now and try to, whatever you're doing right now, put as much as you can into it. And then, you know, if, if it's working, you know, then, then yeah, you're fulfilling your purpose. Just know that it might evolve in the future and, and, or you might fail and then you just learn from it and you kind of pivot. So, so, you know, Mm. just put, put yourself like all you can affect is where, where you're at right now. So, you know, put your full effort into that um, and just know that things might change, but, but, you know, just use everything as feedback and data and just keep learning from it. hundred percent dude. And something else as well, just to quickly add is I, I call it like having a little why, but call it a mini purpose. I think it's really good to tie a mini purpose or a mini why to everything that you do. Because for example, just if you go to the gym, you can say, I want to go to the gym to get fit, right? That's great. But when you're not motivated, it's probably going to fall over. Whereas if you go, I want to go to the gym to get fit. So I live a longer, healthier life to spend more time with my kids. Mm -hmm. There's a much more emotionally driven why behind what you're doing. So although that's not your life purpose to get fitter, there's a mini purpose behind it. And there's a lot more emotionality that keeps you on track. So I think it's really, really helpful to put a mini why or a mini purpose behind everything that you do. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> and if, if you don't have that why for your work um, or your career, then sometimes, yeah, that, cause you, you kind of asked me about men finding their purpose Um, you know, if, if you don't feel like you have that why for your work, then you need to either figure it out, connect a why to it, or maybe you're not in the right work, which like when I, when I got fired from that job, yeah, I had no why with that job when I was trying something different, um, and doing this on the side. So I, my why was right here, but, but I just felt like I needed a nine to five job at the time. Um, but yeah, with relating it to fitness, you know, and kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, yeah, you absolutely need to find that why, like you said, um, and, and I think tying it to, to someone like your kids, like you said, um, or, or even just people that might look up to you, like I was saying before, you know, finding some sort of why like that, like making it bigger than yourself. Yeah. That that's going to honestly probably keep you more motivated. A lot of, a lot of my clients, when I get them on the call for the first time, they're like, yeah, I just want to be able to play with my kids. Like, I feel like I'm worn out when they're running around or like I'm coaching their soccer team or whatever it is. Like, yeah. So a lot of times there's those, those little whys. Um, so just keep those things in mind, like, and don't negotiate with yourself because I've, I've had people, you know, they'll say things like that. And then, <laughs> and then it comes towards the end of the call and they're like, yeah, but I don't know. It's like, don't negotiate with you. Like if you've got these things yeah. that are important to you, if you, if you've got these whys, then don't negotiate with those. Like those are important. Yeah. There's a reason why you have those whys. Like, you know, don't negotiate yeah. with yourself and talk yourself out of it. Like if we only have one life. If, you know, don't take the easy route, um, you know, stick to those whys. And if there's something you want to accomplish and if there's reasons behind it, then listen to that. So, mm. you, know, you know what, brother? I think that that self-negotiation comes from all the instant gratification we got. Like people do not want to work hard anymore because they know that they can feel good by doing fuck all. Right. And I think that's why so many people self-negotiate because they know that what they're going to do is going to take hard work. And these days, not many people work hard because everything's just so easy and accessible. So I yeah. think that, yeah, like we spoke about instant gratification, it's a real killer. Yeah. yeah. Kind of what, what that made me think about with you is just like, you know, people can just easily get Uber Eats and stuff like that. Like everything is so accessible. It that, I It's... It sounds kind of ridiculous, but that, that's even why sometimes I, I'll like try to make things even a little bit tougher on myself. Like in the morning, I'll, I, I like to do intermittent fasting just because I feel like I need to, I have to try to earn my first meal. Like I try to get work done before that first meal when, when honestly, sometimes intermittent fasting isn't even in line with the fitness goals that I have. Um, like sometimes I'm yeah. trying to put on muscle, <laughs> but, but I, I like the mindset that it puts me in. And I like kind of like earning that first meal, like literally being nice. hungry um to 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 get to work and everything like that so yeah 100 so, yeah. dude that's such a good point as well sometimes the things you do aren't in alignment with working towards your goals it's purely for that mental toughness that conditioning your mind side of things like i'm preparing for next footy season right and 
that's a lot of like more short distance intense running but i'm also training for a marathon that's not going to help me with those goals but it's purely to you know show myself that i can do these tough things just to build yeah. that stack of proof behind myself to build that confidence yeah kind of like uh you, you mentioned Dave Goggins. He talks about like his cookie jar. So like things that, that yeah. he does, does in the past that like he, he can go back to that. That's like his confidence. So it's something like that. And then another thing I thought of when you were saying that is like 75 hard, like a lot of people that do 75 hard um, with Andrew Frisella's program. I, you, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So a lot of people that do that, they think that's what's going to get them in shape when really that's a, and he talks about it himself that's a mindset program. That's, that's something to build mental toughness and mental discipline. It's not necessarily to lose weight or get you in the best physical shape. Um, but it's something that's going to set you up with the right mindset. If you can get through something like that, um, to have a lot of mental strength and discipline. So sometimes like, you know, building the skill of the mental strength and discipline will help you reach your physical goals in the long run. Cause you'll be so mentally strong that you can stick to any program. You know, if you can get through something through something like 75 hard, which I've had clients do that while they're training with me. So like I'll provide them with the workouts to actually do and the diet plan to do while they're doing 75 hard. Um, but yeah, if you can like get through something like that, you, you can handle pretty much any program and you'll be able to reach your goals if you can stick to that and, and finish it through. So it's a good hundred percent. Do you, off the top of your head, do you remember what's on the 75 hard challenge? If anyone wanted to do it? Yeah. So basically it's um, working out two times a day for 75 days, one is out, one has to be outside, one has to be inside. Um, and then, um, not drinking alcohol, sticking to a diet. Like literally you can't have a cheat meal the entire time for 75 days, which is pretty tough. Um, and then reading 10 pages of a book every day and drinking a gallon of water every day. I believe that's everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Have you done the 75 hard? I haven't. And I, I had a client challenge me to do it. So I'm probably gonna have to do it pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I might actually do it starting today. You, you're starting it today? Just why not? Have a crack at it. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Get it, man. Yeah. So I'm I'm right now on a, I'm being coached by, by a coach right now myself. So like, I think coaches even need coaches. Um, I think that it's always good to have that extra accountability. Um, so I've got a coach, I'm doing a very specific like program and diet right now for my own specific goals. But I told my client that challenged me to do it. I was like, all right, once I'm done with this, then, then let's talk about doing 75 hard, um, for just more yeah. of the, the mental aspect of it. But, but that'd be awesome if you yeah. do that, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm have a crack at it. And that's such a good point too. People might think that just because they have someone teaching them stuff that they, aren't i guess where they should be or they're not qualified or they're not educated but like you said you've got a coach i've got a coach our coaches probably have coaches and their yep. coaches probably have coaches like yep. you keep progressing up the i guess pecking order of knowledge and right information and ability and you everyone has to learn from someone yeah right yeah yeah i think that's man i i couldn't talk about this more i mean i have coaches for different areas of my life i've got multiple coaches i've got a, a fitness coach i've got a business coach i've got a life coach i i think people think you know you you reach a certain point you don't need to for one people they think they they get a degree you don't need to learn anything more they're like all right i'm good now i can just work for the rest of my life you need to constantly be learning <clears throat> and you you constantly need mentors you need people that you can learn from that are in a better position than you um so i think both of those things like people need to understand that and that that's something i i really do practice what i preach with that um and if you think about it in this way like you know, the best athletes have coaches, literally the top athletes in the world, <laughs> professional athletes, bodybuilder, like professional bodybuilders, Olympic athletes, all those people, like the best people have coaches. It's, it's usually the people that aren't in shape or aren't reaching their goals that don't have coaches. So, so mm -hmm. that should tell you something right there. So <laughs> yeah, bro, hundred percent Kate. And I think thinking you don't need a coach or that a coach won't benefit you is both fucking arrogant and naive <laughs> like if you yeah. if you sit there and think i i can do it on my own i'll be better off without a coach or right. you're just arrogant and you're naive like you just don't understand how impactful a coach can be exactly yeah and i think yeah people they don't know what they don't know and i didn't know what i didn't know before i started with this specific fitness coach that i have right now you know he helped me put on 12 pounds of muscle as a i, I would 
I would consider myself an advanced lifter. Like I've been lifting for like 12 plus years. Okay. So like at, at this point of into my lifting career, it's really hard to put on size. Um, so, but and I, I kind of had that mental barrier just thinking like, okay, I'm not really going to put on much more muscle. I've been doing this for too long. Um, but you know, there's certain limiting beliefs that you might have that people can help you break through. That's, that's part of coaching as well. And, you know, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So, and that, yeah. that's part of like, sometimes like you could be come across as arrogant if you think, you know, everything. Um, but there's always more to learn. And I think the, the hundred percent, yeah, the, the easiest way to kind of pigeonhole yourself or hoard yourself back is thinking, you know, everything a hundred percent. Too true, dude. And something that my coach has told me is that people, they might even know the stuff you're telling them, but they don't know how to implement it. Like the implementation is what most people struggle with. And that's what a coach will do for you is they'll give you the most clearly mapped out um, step through progress of how you can implement the stuff that you either learn or that you already know and you can get from A to Z. And that's what people struggle with. A hundred percent. It's it's the execution and it's just that little bit of extra accountability. It, it goes so far. Like I didn't think, you know, I, I felt like I could hold myself very accountable and I, I can honestly better than like 99% of the population. But I, I seeked out a coach who literally has stepped on the Olympia stage. So like seek out someone at a higher level than you and you are going to learn and like raise your standard um, t- learning from them. So like, you know, seek out someone that's in a better position from you and they've probably got a higher standard than you have. And that's why they're in that better position. So you're going to learn from that and you're going to learn how to execute in a different way. Like you said, you're going to learn a whole different type of implementation um, and you, and you're going to honestly just be held accountable. And, and just like, it's so simple for me. I check in with my coach once a week over email um, and I send him a video and then he sends me some feedback, uh, but I've got to send him my progress pictures and uh, kind of give him a little spiel about how I did this week and stuff like that. He's got certain questions I've got to answer. Um, literally just doing that once a week, it holds me so accountable. Like it, it makes it so that, you know, I've got to report to someone and I, I literally don't want to let him down. Like he's someone in a better position than me. And like, you know, I kind of look up to him. I'm sure there's certain people that maybe look up to me a little bit with, with, with their fitness goals. Um, so, you know, it, just that little bit of accountability and having to report to someone goes a really long way. Yeah. 100% brother. And yeah, that's such, such a good point. And that's what people need is just accountability and someone there to just be like, yeah, we're in this together. Cause otherwise you can also feel a bit alone, dude. So yeah, great point. We'll finish up after our last question, brother. And it's become a segment, the number one. So whether it's like a skill, a mindset, a habit, or just anything to you, what makes you or anyone become the best man that they can be? Good question. So the one thing I would say that's going to help you become the most valuable man you could possibly be is falling in love with the process and not being too fixated on the outcome. Okay. Cause if you fall in love with the process, if you fall in love with all the little things, all the habits that are going to get you there, if you can really literally appreciate that and, and fall in love with what is going to get you there, then it's going to take care of itself. All right. If you're too fixated on the outcome, if it's all about the outcome, if you're like, okay, I just need to get a six pack as fast as possible. Like if that's, if that's like the only thing you're fixated on and thinking about, like it, it, you're probably one, either not going to get there because you're not going to get there quick enough and you're going to give up or um, you'll get there and you'll realize that that's not what it's all about. Okay. So it's, it's about creating um, the habits and lifestyle because then if you can do that and you can create something that you can sustain, then, then you'll be able to maintain it the rest of your life. So it's about falling in love with a process, no matter what it is, if it's fitness, if it's business, no matter what it is, it's about falling in love with all the things that are going to get you there. Um, you know, if it's fitness, literally falling in love with going to the gym. I know for some people it might sound ridiculous, um, but you need to find a way that should be your overall um, purpose or like your overall goal is to fall in love with, with doing whatever you're doing to get to the outcome. Cause that's going to get you farther than anything else. You know, it's mm-hmm. the, the quote, it's probably cliche at this point, but like the man that um, falls in love with, with walking is going to get farther than the man that's in love with a destination or, you know, it's, it's a quote like yeah. that. Um, so it's the same thing with re- really anything. And I think if you can, you know, 
relating to business or your work, if you can literally fall in love with making the calls, making the messages, sending the emails <laughs> that you need to send, like all the little things, like if you can find a way to, to make that fun for yourself and fall in love with the process and appreciate it and find the purpose and meaning and all those little things, then that's going to take you farther than anything. 100% brother. And I could not agree more. Like, And for people who may not understand what that looks like, I think the best way to fall in love with the process is focus on what you can control. Like you can't control whether or not you're going to get a six pack in 10 weeks, but you can control if you're going to go to the gym and do 30 minute session or a one hour session. You can just focus on what you can control, fall in love with that, which is the process. And then you will end up getting to the destination. And if you don't, well, then it doesn't matter because you fell in love with what you were doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's well said. Yeah. And I think, like you said, like going to the gym and then, and then realizing that it may, actually makes you feel good each time. Like there's little, little physical chemicals released um, that make you feel good when you do that sort of thing. And, and like falling in love with the nutrition side, because you realize that that's what actually makes you feel good. And the garbage food that, that you used to eat actually makes you feel terrible. Um, so like, you know, there, there's certain reasons um, why and how you can fall in love with the process because literally, you know, it, it does help you feel better along the way. So, mm. and really quickly, just to add on to that, bro, it's just yes. going to keep on going, but <laughs> it doesn't always have to be really, I guess, neat and clean. Like I've spoke about this on one of my last podcasts, but I'm going through some big adverse um, challenges at the moment. And that's kind of throwing everything out of place for me. And I'm still going to the gym. I'm still working towards my goals. It's not looking good. Like I'm not getting heaps of sleep or everything's all over the place, but I'm still getting it done. And like falling in love with the process just means still getting shit done no matter how it looks. Like it doesn't always have to be perfectly structured. So I just thought I'd add that on. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think sometimes, yeah, it's just learning to live in chaos. A lot of times that's that's when you're going to grow. Um, and like, honestly, like that's, that's probably where you're not going to grow in the times where you're super comfortable and everything is, is neat and clean. Like you no, said, no, yeah, no. It, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not going to grow in times like that. It's like when things feel kind of like Jesus Christ, like everything's like all over the place is chaos. Like everything's kind of like scattered and you're just like trying to make it through. Like th- those are usually the times when you're growing the most. So I think that's mm-hmm. a good point. 100% brother. Awesome. Really appreciate you coming on, dude. It's been an awesome chat. Um, where can people find you, whether it's Instagram, social media, where can people find you, brother? Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. So um, I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, it's just my name, Cade Junkerth. I think since we're on Zoom, you'll be able to see it over somewhere over here. There you go. <laughs> so, <funny. laughs> so yeah, Cade Junkerth. And then Instagram uh, is probably my, my biggest. Yeah, that's my biggest platform. Uh, so it's going to be my name underscore Junkerth. So Kate underscore Junkerth on Instagram. But I'm all over the place. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Facebook. But I would say Instagram is kind of my main one. So, so yeah. Awesome, brother. Again, thanks for coming on, dude. Have a sick chat. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Nice to meet you. We'll have to do it again. 100%, bro. That was awesome, dude. Fuck that. that was-